this is Polly. Today, I'm going to turn this sugar roll into King Agusti. Get the blonde version from the cheetah. Actually, this sugar roll is what I did 3 months ago for Miss Park. I don't have footage of makeup, but I newly filmed drawing a scar and touching up a little here and there, which I've accidentally removed. So we are gonna begin with this outfit. I think the key point of this king costume is the gold embroidery. At first, I considered using this adhesive gold foils, but these seem to be too small. So I decided to have a go at thermal transfer printing for the first time. I got this dragon image from a stock photography provider and then I resize it in different scales. You might also have to save it this way because one piece of thermal transfer paper is not the cheap. Anyway, let's iron it slowly following the instructions and then peel off the silicone sheet. Then it will look something like this. Now it has become part of the fabric. By the way, I found out this dragon pattern was actually identical to that of King Shiga's. That's pretty nice. Okay then, now I'm gonna sew along the shoulder lines. Three pieces are now connected, and I add a collar to them and press the neckline. This Korean traditional collar should be backstitched, so the stitches can hardly be seen. Looks like it's well done. Add the arms and flip it over. It's almost done. Let me finish this hanbok top by adding a white hem on the left front. As for pants, I've already made hanbok trousers in my Jimin video, so I'm going to use the same pattern for them. the same as this design of the unique fly front. This black chiffon is for separate vest. Dealing with this chiffon is always a pain in the neck, but it's great when making see-through garments. It will be complete with this golden bias sewn along the neckline. Let's pick which color would be best for the blonde king. How about this one in the middle? I'm gonna use one third of the hole. I thought I should plant as thick hair as possible along the boundary while leaving the other part very thin. Actually, I wanted to show you both styles, a half updo ponytail and a top knot. And I also purchased lots of tiny materials for the hairpin in his top knot. But as I went along, I had to admit that my plan was probably over ambitious. Or at least I can say that's not possible with high temp hair. Because Korean style top knots require only a small amount of hair, and his hair was overwhelmingly getting thicker and thicker even without the top hair and the ponytail wouldn't look nice either this way. So I first tried to press the roots using a soldering iron, and I also cut out the inner laws of hair, except the outermost law. It was only after I gave up one style and decided to stick to the other that everything became so clear. Let's move on to accessories. These two types of black fabric are for his headband. It's called mangon. I backstitched the chiffon a lot longer than I needed because it often causes tangling on the reverse side and I wanted to use the best stitches only. 
Anyway, after ironing heat sealing tapes, it's done. Can you see this see-through area on his forehead while the back side of the headband is blind? Now I'm gonna use this copper wire to make his hair ornament. Among several wire crafts I've tried, I figured this coiled bangle type design would suit his image better. I've finished this by attaching a redstone framed in gold. The headband buttons I'm gluing now are called Hwanja in Korean, which means temples. That is exactly at which they should be located. We are almost there. Let me finish King Agusti by adding the earrings and necklace. I shouldn't forget about his sword. I couldn't get one with a black handle, so I'm going to paint this miniature sword in black using an airbrush and lacquer paint. Last but not least, I'm painting the miniature wooden floor in black. It seems like the stage is ready for the show. Let's go see our King Yoongi. Mm -hmm. 